Greetings, adventurous travelers and fellow keepers of the lake. How are you all doing? Today, I wanted to talk about a little session recap uh, from the yesterday session, which was Star on the Shore. It is a module for Call of Cthulhu. This is the first time I have run Call of Cthulhu for four players, and this is maybe the biggest module that I've run so far. I am preparing to run something even longer and bigger. Up until now, I have had this sweet spot where two players is like the best vibe I could get because I can like divide my attention equally and no one is like waiting. Three is still manageable, especially when I'm playing with the same group I play all the games with. But four, it was a bit, yeah, it was a bit different and I want to share what I've learned and what are the mistakes I made so you don't have to make the same mistakes. Anyways, roll the intro and let's get into the nitty gritty details. So this was the setup. I have four players. I have the biologist, the physicist, a journalist student and an actress. The actress and the physicist are in some form of like a relationship. The biologist, he came from uh, USA and uh, he and physicist were on the last session together without these two. The physicist will be actually hospitalized because of the explosion of the generator and the student and his um, girlfriend, let's call it like that, they would come to the hospital and the biologist friend would propose that they go to uh, the USA because they couldn't localize the material. Get it? Like, I, I that was the idea. Like, I, it was a good idea. Like, if you can't localize it, then just make them go to a place where that's the native language. I took the biologist's player to the other room and explain to him like you should get these uh, involved in this case and the hospitalized physicist well that player he would be playing the detective that is waiting for them there huge mistake they didn't really do things how i imagined so what happened was the student and the actress they became uh, suspicious <laughs> with the biologist and there was a whole like four and a half hours role play of him trying everything he can to make them go promising money and careers and like from the role play perspective it was gold but the hospitalized player he was just there he was just there. I tried uh, getting another NPC into the, the story as he was actually the professor of the student character. Maybe if he goes, did I mention he's insane? Yeah, he, he went insane. But if they bring that insane guy to America, maybe his student will come with him to, to take care of him. And if the physicist lying in bed says to his dear actress, to look after the the kid, then she will go as well. In in my mind, it, this made sense, right? Lessons learned in Call of Cthulhu games, in these episodic games. Don't hold to, to that narrative and temporal consistency. Let it go. Pull the curtain on, draw the curtain back, say you're in America. This is how it happened. Everyone will say, okay, we get it. We heard what happened in between the episodes. Now the on-screen time is the action. They're not doing the less interesting like uh, shoe leather stuff. Of course, I should have remembered Professor DM's video, but I took shoe leather into the next level, letting them do this for four hours. I love having those uh, shoe leather moments in the beginning of the session, as it kind of creates like an anchor to the normal life that your characters are like having in the real world before everything dips into the Eldritch Horror uh, Hell of No Return. So that's fine, but limit it to one hour max. So if you're playing a three hour session, the first hour, you can do the shoe leather stuff. The second hour should be the ramp up. The third hour should be split into half an hour complete escalation and half an hour of like resolve. And the second uh, lesson that I learned, let your idle players uh, DM unimportant characters. The character that was in the hospital, he wasn't playing for three hours. One thing that he did to make it easier for himself, he started literally DMing like side characters, for example, the taxi driver. Alex, that was, that was an amazing thing. I mean, this player, he has some DMing experience, so it was kind of natural to him, but it still was like a really cool thing and it saved a part of the game. I will make a full video explaining like a lot of these meta things that we're doing that make my job as a DM much easier and their experience of playing sometimes just a little bit more fun. Right, so they arrived to, to the USA and they were like, okay, we were forced to come to America and we have a case to solve where we will get a lot of money. How big is this city? Well, from the scenario, you can go in between any of the locations in max half an hour. They said fine. They instantly split. 
into four different places. They just wanted to gather as much information as they can, finish this case as fast as they can and be done with it. And I'm not talking about the players. The players were like into the stuff. I'm talking about the characters. From the character point of view, it didn't make sense to prolong this stuff. You were in a small place in America, you wanted to visit Boston and stay in Boston, for example, but you ended up in like a small city with fog and like crows looking at you funny. And yeah, they were just like, yeah, let's finish this and go. And that's fine. That's already you feel the, the tension. You feel that they don't want to be there. And that's the feeling we are going for. But the way they reacted to it is let's all split. So I tried doing one interaction per person in a clockwise order. I think if we had roleplay for uh, 15 minutes per person, even 10 minutes per person, that means that uh, your turn to act is once every half an hour or 45 minutes. That's horrible. Splitting the party is not a demon-like thing that everyone says it is and the reasoning behind why everyone says that is this this type of scenario. It's my fault that I didn't exploit this. Because in Call of Cthulhu, splitting the party is actually quite interesting. You can make horrible things happen to each and every one of them and they are totally alone. So it was on me to exploit that and scare them into going and staying together, scare the flock and make them regroup. I was too tired. The session was at its sixth hour and I was just following the book, doing the crow scares from time to time. Overall, lackluster. So two more notes. One is when your players split, think about uh, having some way to reinforce them wanting to stick together. Give them different clues that they need to be together to connect or give them like a scare that would be a reason for regrouping. You don't have to do it every time. You don't have to do it to the whole party. Be aware that your party is split. Don't just commit to like having equal attention to each and every one of the group and, and leave them divided, actively think about how you would enforce uh, them coming back together or just kill one of them, then you don't have to think about it. I mean, in Call of Cthulhu, it's fine. I know I wouldn't do it in, in Pathfinder or D&D, but Call of Cthulhu, yeah, just off one of them and then they will all come back together. The second lesson would be don't try to handle too much when you're tired. Be real with yourself. Was it a hard day? Is this coffee starting to wear off? Did I drink too many beers? Listen to your body, listen to your mind and, and you will see if you're tired and there are certainly two types of tiredness. One is when you feel like the white noise in your head, you have all these things and everything is like mushing together. Then you just need to take a break. Tell your players we are kind of like deprived of uh, focus. So let's let's take a breather. But if you're really like tired, tired, just call it a day. It doesn't have to be a one shot. You don't have a, a finish line that you have to cross or like a checkpoint. Uh, screw the checkpoint. Go sleep. Go rest, maybe use the rest of the time that you scheduled to hang out. I am not the first to say that rest is important and then go and do a bender of 10 hours uh, of working and then 6 hours of playing D&D. This is bad behavior. Listen, people, this is bad behavior. Don't do it. I do it. It's, it's not good. And I learned this lesson every time. And now I hope when I say it in a video that I would be held accountable to what I'm talking about. So yeah, rest, cut the session short and rest. If you want the quality to be there or people won't come again, it's it's that simple. Anyways, uh, those are the lessons learned. I would cut it here. My battery is, as I can see, very low. So let's do this quick. I hope this was useful. Thank you so much for watching another video. If you like what you see, uh, subscribe. I would be doing another one of these uh, as soon as we play another one of these sessions. And yeah, if you want to support me uh, even further, there is a Ko-Fi link. Buy us a mini so we can put something scary on the table. As always, keep on going, keep on loving, keep on being creative, play more D&D, and I will see you in the next one. Farewell, Keeper.